Okay, I'm going to tie a mole leech. A uh, very simple fly, but there are some fun little tricks about it. Now, I'm starting with a, a base that we already dis we already tied in for another video. And here's an example. We're tying on a base that is a, a super braid. Uh, and this is my favorite super braid right here. You, you would not use, this is a wire uh, stinger. You would not use wire or a stiff monofilament to tie a mole leech. You want something that's flexible. Uh, and I, I tie these on a TMC 811S, fairly small hook, size 6. You can even use a size 8. Excuse me, the key thing is, is that's a stainless hook that will break and you won't have to cut it. Uh, here's a color that has worked well for me. It's a bright orange. Here's another one that's really good. These are both mole leeches and you'll see they are, they are flexible. Uh, blacks, purples, all kinds of colors work well. I'm going to show you one that's unusual and it has been very effective for me fishing low, clear, not low, fishing clear water, both winter and summer. So this is a, this is a two-tone, this is a, a a white and light blue cross-cut rabbit. It's not the strip. I'm going to want the hide in the front and the hair sweeping towards the back. And I'm going to trim off the first couple of inches of that because it it is it's basically waste. So the first trick about this is to push some tweezers Keep in mind, this is a loop of super braid. It's not a single strand. You push your scissors through, you grab that rabbit strip, and you pull it through eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. Some people will try to start this rabbit strip in this high up. They want to be able to change this hook out if it gets dulled. My personal opinion is that what that does, it, it lets that hook flop around more and it will tend to get fouled. I don't like my hooks to foul so I I make this a one hook yeah. fly and I tie this back strip right in here to where the tips of the rabbit just about reach or slightly go past the back end of the hook. Super glue is quite a bit trickier. It can be done but the super glue tends to uh, bond very quickly with the rabbit and can make it very stiff. Here's these little micro disposable brushes. I don't use the brush end for this. I use the um, the handle end. This and what I'm going to do here first, I put a little drop right in the junction, and I hold that right tight. I coat this rabbit with it. This will make a very secure bond. You can make these in any length you like. Derek likes to fish them in 3 inch or 5 inch. I like them in a 4 inch size. Put a little bit up there on the hook. Now, I hold that piece steady. Keep tension on it and I get it started around there. And I will overlap just a tiny bit of the hide. I don't overlap very much. We haven't tied the thread on yet. There, yeah, there's no thread, there's no thread securing this. This is, this is being held uh, simply by inserting the end through that, uh, but between that loop of super braid, and I'm coming up here, and I'm gonna pull this under the hook, and then come around the hook, and I'm gonna come up fairly close to the dumbbells, and then I can let go of it. Now, if everything goes right here which of course it will. I'm going to take this vise off 
and I'm going to take the stinger hook out of the vise, place the forward hook in the vise. Those stingers are sticky sharp. Cut. All you have to do is be smart enough to know how to secure a hook in a vise. So you remember, I just let this piece of rabbit, it had a little bit of tearmender on there. It's secure enough to hold it. Now I'm going to I'm going to tie this off, but I want to leave a little bit of space before the dumbbell because I'm going to wind a hackle on there. You don't have to. We're going to fancy it up a little bit. I I could simply I could have wound that crosscut all the way to the dumbbell, uh, put a little bit of dubbing on it, finished it up. But I'm going to take a a uh, rooster schlappen hackle. I'm going to take a purple one. Again, think about this color. Think about water that may be pretty cold, it's pretty clear. Fish have been seeing bright colors. They've been seeing oranges and purples and reds and blacks. And now they're going to see this very subtle color. And they're going to just want to eat this. So, I've got, I'm going to fold, I tied this hackle in by the tip, and I'm going to fold it as we showed in another video. And I didn't trim the, the butt off this hackle so I can use it to wind. And I want to wind this nice and close to that, to those dumbbells. I'm going to tie this off here. And again, if you're just fishing this, you got a great fly right here. But we're going to make it just a tiny bit fancier. We're going to put on a dubbing loop. So I, I put my finger on the thread, secure that thread, just wind that thread right over itself. I've got a little bit of dark purple dubbing here, and it could be Sanyo's new dubbing, it could be tri uh, could be uh, Borden's custom dubbing blend. We're looking for something nice and fuzzy here. And people use a lot of different dubbing spinning tools. This is one that I happen to have handy. I'm going to spin this up a little bit. I'm going to rough it up a little bit with my fingernails. Pull a few of the clumps out. I'm going to pull these hackles back. And I'm going to wrap behind the eyes a couple times. And then in front of the eyes. And if, if I have too much dubbing left there, I'm going to pull a little bit out just to thin it up, tie this off. If I don't try to thin it up a little bit, it'll leave a bigger clump there. Give this a little whip finish. Now I have one more thing to do. And normally I'd put a little bit of cement on there, but so now you have a beautiful fly with two hooks. You don't want two hooks. With some types of steel, you have to cut the hook. With this steel, I can grasp this hook firmly with my pliers, do a little bend there. It breaks right off. There are no real sharp edges. And here you have yourself a very nice clear water mole leech.